Alrighty, welcome to our first YouTube video for the geometry class. Uh, the first section that we're going to be talking about here for our uh, online videos and notes is going to be the area of uh, some basic polygons. So we're going to have the uh, area of triangles and quadrilaterals. And uh, we'll break those quadrilaterals down into the basics. And then we'll also talk about uh, rhombuses and a kite. Um, your notes are already online, so hopefully you have those. Uh, we'll go ahead and fill in the notes. I believe you already have a filled in version, but we can see how that happens. Uh, and then the uh, lesson here and the notes you'll use for uh, assignment number one. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's turn on my background display here in the background. And let's shrink me up here in the corner. And then let's slide over to the document camera. <clears throat> So the first thing we're going to talk about uh, is the area of a parallelogram. Um, now, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two sets of parallel lines. Uh, so you'll see parallel lines here and here, and then parallel lines across the top and the bottom. A rectangle is going to be your most basic of the parallelograms. Uh, now, we already know that the area of a parallelogram is going to be base times height. Well, if we look here, the most important thing to recognize about all of our shapes is when we talk about base and height, we need this right angle right here. So this right angle is going to be crucial. So if I start looking at the base and the height of this quadrilateral, we have to recognize that only part of that information is given to us. We are given the base of this parallelogram. So the base of our parallelogram is going to be straight across here. Now the height is the key because the height is not given to us. So if we start looking at finding the base and the height of this parallelogram, and I say, okay, area equals base times height. Well, I know the base is five and three, so the base is eight. It's the height that we don't know. Well, if we look within this parallelogram, there is a right triangle. Well, I can find the missing piece of my right triangle by using Pythagorean theorem. So I look at my right angle and I'm given side C. So I'm going to go 3 squared plus B squared equals 5 squared. And then as I go through and solve that, I've got 9 plus B squared equals 25. B squared equals 16. So B equals 4. All right. Well, 4 is now the height of this parallelogram. So I can plug that in right here. And I have an area that is 32. And in this case, we'll just go square units. Uh, we don't have a label on there. So if we're finding the area of a parallelogram, we might have to problem solve and troubleshoot things just a little bit. Well, what if we're given some information? So if we start looking at some information that's given to us, let's go ahead and clear you out. What if I am given the area of a parallelogram we're going to be given the area of a parallelogram is 5x squared minus 5x centimeters squared. And what if I tell you that the base is 5 and I want to find out what the height equals? Well, what I can do with this expression right here is I can factor. Now I can factor out 5x, but what I really want to factor out is the 5. So if I factor out the 5, I am left with x squared minus x square centimeters. Well, the reason why I wanted to factor out the 5 is because if I come back up here and I look at base times height, and I know the base is 5, well, I can put that in front of parentheses. Well, what is the 5 multiplying by? The x squared minus x is your height. So if I'm going to find the height, height equals x squared 
oops, excuse me, x squared minus x. So we factored out the 5 in front, and the expression left in parentheses is the height. So that's basics of area base times height for a parallelogram. Well, let's take a look at a couple other uh, formulas here. Area of a triangle we've used before. So we're not going to spend a lot of time worrying about that. But the area of a triangle can be 1 half base times height, or the area of a triangle can be base times height over 2. It all depends on the clues that you're given and how you want to use that formula. The area of a trapezoid, 1 half height, B1 plus B2, or the area is height times B1 plus B2 all over 2. And again, it's the same idea as a triangle, just depends how you want to set it up. Now B sub 1 and B sub 2, that's going to be the two bases of your trapezoid. So if I have a trapezoid here, the two parallel lines of a trapezoid are your B1 and your B2. It doesn't matter how the trapezoid is drawn, B1 and B2 are always going to be the two parallel sides. Um, I could have a trapezoid that would look like this. So here's a trapezoid. Well, now your B1 and B2 are on the sides because the trapezoid's basically been tilted sideways. Now remember, the height has to be a right angle. So in this one here, that height would be on the inside, so we might have to use Pythagorean Theorem again. For this one that I drew up here, the height happens to have right angles automatic. So remember when we're talking about height, it always has to create your right angles. Triangles and trapezoids are, for the most part, review. Now here's where things get a little bit new for us. The area of a rhombus or a kite. Now a rhombus is all four sides are equal. A kite could be stretched out in either direction. Now the area of a rhombus or a kite is one half, and this is diagonal one, diagonal two. So your D1, and I guess we could also think of it as a diameter like with a circle. So D1 is from vertice to vertice, and the other one is from vertice to vertice. So you're going to take those two values, and you're going to say that that's D1 and D2. Well, notice what it makes in the middle we have right angles, and that's gonna be really important for us. All right. So if I come over here and say, okay, we need to find the area of this particular kite. And I'm gonna say, okay, area equals one half D1 and D2. Well, if I look at what I have in here, I am missing lots of information. All right. So I'm gonna to have to find those missing pieces. And I'm going to do that because I can fill in certain values using Pythagorean Theorem. Well, the first thing I know is that if this is 9, this one is also going to be 9 because they bisect each other. So now I'm going to need to find these out here. Now, because it's a kite, these are not necessarily going to be equal. If it was a rhombus, it would be. But because it's not a rhombus and these sides aren't equal, we're going to have to find those pieces out. So what we're going to use, we're going to use Pythagorean Theorem. And I can say that 9 squared plus b squared equals 41 squared. So we're going to use this right triangle here to find this value. So I'm going to plug that in. 9 squared plus b squared equals 41 squared. Well, 9 squared is 81 plus b squared. And 41 squared, you're going to use your calculator for. And when you use your calculator you're going to find it's 1,681. We'll subtract the 81 to both sides, and b squared equals 1,600. So therefore, b equals 40. Okay. So we're going to have 40 right here for this piece on the inside of this kite. Well, over here, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to have to use Pythagorean Theorem again, because I have a right triangle right here. So we're going to go 9 squared plus b squared equals 15 squared. And again, I'm finding a missing piece. All right, so when I go 9 squared, it's going to be 81 plus b squared. 15 squared you might memorize. If not, you're using your calculator. We know it's 225. 
We'll subtract the 81 to both sides, and I get b squared equals 144. Therefore, b equals 12. So that makes this value right here 12. Well, if I now look, I have this one here is 9 and 9, so that's 18. And this one here is 40 and 12, so that's 52. So when I start looking at finding the area, area will equal 1 half of 18 times 52. And when I multiply that all out, this area is going to equal 468 square inches. And that's going to be how we find the area of a kite. So if you are not given the D1 and the D2, you're going to have to do some calculations to find out those missing pieces. The rest of this is going to be pretty straightforward because it's just taking your clues and plugging in to find the area of whatever quadrilateral or triangle that you are given. I hope that this helped. This is your first lesson online, so if you have any feedback, please be sure to give me feedback on what went well and what did not. Have a great day.